for generations, the Gridiron was the only location for football, for friends and family to go out, have a good time, get a little dirty, and have some family bonding. But with the introduction of platforms such as tablets, cell phones, and even computers, this new generation has taken a game that was created in the mud and the grass of fields across the country and taken it to the clean streets of the internet, also known as fantasy football. Like it's a drug, it's, it's a big part of our culture. Now you're not just cheering for your hometown team or your favorite team, you're cheering for players who may be on the rival team. It just drives people crazy and it's just amazing how much people care and how many people almost care more about their fantasy players than they do their team. According to the Competitive Sports Analysis, fantasy sports are attracting teens and younger kids because it enables them to capitalize on their favorite hobby, which is using social networking. With an estimated 75 million new users last year, more and more of the players of fantasy football are comprised by this younger generation. I've been playing fantasy sports since I was a, uh, a sophomore in high school, so I'm going on about five years now. Six years. I was in eighth grade of high school. About ninth grade. Sophomore year of high school. Sixth grade. My dad and I went to a draft with a guy from my church and a few of his friends. And I can remember the first draft pick I ever made. I was a huge Steelers fan. And I didn't understand fantasy football. So my first fantasy pick, we had the first overall pick, the Steelers defense. With participants ranging from hardcore fans to the casual player, there is no end to the amount of reasons why fantasy football players play the game. I continue to play for the intrigue. I mean, it's a fun thing to do with friends, but also um, I consider myself to have a, lo a lot of knowledge on a lot of different sports, so I, I use it to kind of challenge myself, see how much I actually know. Fantasy sports allows you to branch out and follow other guys from other teams. It forces you to get involved and forces you to interact with uh, the other guys in the league and see who's doing well, see who's not doing well, see the trends, see how other teams are doing. So I think that fantasy football really helps get out of the local niche of your football uh, fandom. I play fantasy football because it's, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a fun attachment to the game I already loved watching. Um, and it's, it's really fun to watch on Sundays, not only your team, but different players in your lineup and how, how well they, they match up versus the opposing team and how well you do. Um, I think it's, it's really fun, it adds an element to the game that uh, wasn't there before. I guess I just wanted the challenge and everyone else, it just kind of like brought them together. It was just sort of like a camaraderie type thing where that's, they all could kind of joke, joke around with each other about how the like, weeks have went, so uh, that's one of the reasons I did it. And I guess it just is kind of a competitive type thing where you say, well, I do want the challenge of trying to pick this team and be able to work with it and try and beat some of my friends and, you know, have some bragging rights, but it's not going well so far. What started out as a fun hobby has quickly become something that's been monetized, but not everybody is ready to jump on that bandwagon. I just don't like spending money when I don't know if, when I doubt I'm getting it back. One year I did play for money and it didn't go so well, I didn't win. And I always said that playing for money is dumb because you can lose and I don't like to lose money. Very cheap, I don't like spending money and if I'm gonna put money in that I'm not guaranteed to get out, I personally don't like that. I'm not a huge person. If I'm gonna buy a $5 lottery ticket, that's $5 that could go towards a Subway sandwich. If I'm not gonna get that $5 back, I myself don't want to spend it, but there is a little part of me that says, wait, you could get $25 from this $5 and you could get four or five Subway sandwiches. And then I think, wow, maybe this is a good idea. So the back of my head, the little demons inside are saying, you know, it's not a bad idea, but I'm still very cheap and the cheap gate in me still says, you know, don't spend money that you may lose and it's a waste of money. I, I've, I've won a couple leagues and for basketball I've come close, I've, I've won a little bit, but it's never been great success, but I don't really do it for the money, I do it for the intrigue and the challenge. Once it was realized that money could be made from fantasy sports, two websites, DraftKings and FanDuel, have taken that to a whole different level, 
creating everyday games where they, instead of gambling for an entire season on a team, you're gambling on individual players. This has brought them under fire of recent times for the perception that they are actually gambling. In my opinion, it's definitely gambling, so it'll be interesting to see where it goes in the future in terms of states trying to crack down like New York did. And Duel and DraftKings are starting to go towards that gambling loaded word and people are seeing them as bad. I think they're fun, I think they're entertaining and they have great value, but at some point I think you know, with the inside people that are in there and all the legal scandals that are going on with them, I think that's very, very sketchy waters. I believe that FanDuel and DraftKings, they're, they're gambling and it's like anything else. Um, people can get addicted to it the same way they can drugs or alcohol or, or gambling on, on the spreads or playing at the poker table, but I, I believe it's okay in moderation. And it's not really hurting anyone. I mean, it, they found kind of a loophole and they're doing something with it. And they've been able to find success and they've got a lot of intrigue and they've made a lot of money. And I, I know with the recent scandal, it looks bad. But I mean, there's always cracks in the armor, no matter whether that's a sports book in Vegas or whether that's a website like that. Paul Daniels, a newcomer to DraftKings, has already found much more enjoyment and profitability from this game as opposed to the fantasy sports he's played for years. The appeal is winning, obviously, and um, you know, it's, it's funny because if you asked me this question last year, I would have said no way. No way would I do DraftKings, no way would I do any of these gambling um, fantasy sports sites. But then uh, as time went along, um, I said, you know what, we'll give this a shot. And I put in a small deposit when I first started out and have been very successful. So if, if maybe if I, if I didn't win at first, then I was said, all right, that's it, done. But I've had great success. I consider it gambling and I, I play it. Um, but <laughs> if you're 21 and over, why can't, you, why can't you gamble some money on a sports site that is legit? And um, they found loopholes in the system. Uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, and all the other sites, they, they found a loophole, really, and exposed it because you can't bet for a team to win. Instead, they found betting on players. And that, that's a big loophole in the system, and they have every right to do it. And I've, I've won some leagues, and I've lost some leagues. It's, okay. it's, it's not as fun as DraftKings or FanDuel because you, you have the opportunity to win every week. But um, yeah, I'd do it for, for a small or smaller amounts of money. Um, but it's just not, not as entertaining as, as these sites are. While fantasy football gains all the hyping glory as being the premier fantasy sport, there are other fantasy sports of note, including hockey and baseball. I've actually, I have played a fantasy hockey league and I am a football fan, but I've kind of gone away from the sport in recent years and I've gone towards hockey. So I did do a fantasy hockey league and I, I played around with that a lot more than I did with football, even though it is a longer season with more games. I think since it is a longer season, you have games every day, it's okay to miss a couple, whereas the NFL, if you miss a Sunday, you pretty much lose your league, or at least lose that week. I used to. I used to play fantasy baseball and fantasy hockey. Uh, just with my busy schedule, fantasy football is a little bit easier because you only really have to pay attention for one or two days a week. Now in fantasy baseball or hockey, it's a daily thing where you have to check every day, maybe a couple times a day just because if someone gets injured, you have to change your lineup at the last minute. But for football, it's really easy to manage because you're just uh, checking it like one or two days a week. I've played uh, fantasy baseball uh, a couple times. Um, it's not that easy playing fantasy uh, baseball. Uh, one, I did play on MLB.com. That was my favorite type of fantasy baseball because I, I believe I won that league. Uh, but it's much easier because you only worry about the player on a week-to-week -week basis instead of a daily basis like on ESPN. I, I played uh, fantasy baseball and fantasy hockey and fantasy basketball. Um, but there's challenges with that. You have to be a lot more observant. You have to check your lineup every day because it's more of a daily kind of fantasy. Uh, but I mean, fantasy football is definitely my favorite. Check it once a week and I feel like I have greater knowledge on football and I can try to use it to my advantage. 
What once was something that was simply completed on the computer prior to gameplay starting has been taken over by not just the technology world but the broadcasting world as well to keep us inundated with fantasy news updates continually. Fan experience has definitely changed and people aren't consuming content the way that people produce it anymore. They, the producers of content in the networks need to figure out ways to adapt to fantasy to tailor to the consumer's needs because they're eating this up. This is how we are going to watch sports now. I think you're going to see fantasy become even a big part of these new stadiums that are getting built. Maybe you have a whole fantasy football lounge. You're paying all this money to get in the game, but you're still going to be checking your fantasy football scores on your phone. Maybe these new stadiums that are going up and teams maybe start to look to enhancing the fan experience by including fantasy in their stadiums. Money, more money involved. Um, I'm quite surprised by how much interest it has generated. Um, but like, like now, they they even have uh, there's a lounge in Las Vegas. It's called the DraftKings Lounge, and you can go there and eat and just watch fantasy and have your screen in front of you. Um, maybe there's going to be more of those. Fantasy sports, it's it's at a peak. And it could all come down to what happens with the FanDuel and DraftKings thing. Because, I mean, it started on kind of the, the backyard level where everyone would, would sign up with an ESPN or a Yahoo and do that with their friends and put money into that. Then FanDuel and DraftKings came and established something where you could compete against other people in the daily, daily and weekly fantasy. So, I mean, it could all be determined like that. I mean, fantasy keeps growing and growing. Just kind of when it's going to hit that climax and maybe take a sort of a downfall. I see sports teams embracing the fantasy sports. Uh, it's not that they've necessarily been denying it or anything. I just feel like that they're going to add it to the fan experience in the stadium for fans that want to check their fantasy sports while they're at the event because they already do it on TV. They have segments for fantasy sports and sponsored by FanDuel and DraftKings, but uh, I think that next step will be incorporating it into the in-game experience. With the competitiveness of fantasy sports ever rising, fans have shifted their loyalties from teams that they have followed for years to individual players that may even be going against their favorite teams. I'm a huge football fan and I'll watch football, any football game that's on, but uh, it's, it's actually had a big effect because uh, I look for certain players to have big games. I've noticed that it's grown exponentially. It's unbelievable how many people do participate in fantasy sports and how much it's changed overall on the landscape of sports, especially with broadcasting. Some networks have their own fantasy shows or their own segments for fantasy where they spend hours at a time going over analytics of fantasy football. I guess when I used to watch football, I just watch it for the enjoyment. Now I do find myself watching games I wouldn't normally watch, hoping a player would get points. Um, I have AJ Green for a third straight year. When he plays the Steelers, I, tip, I do cheer for AJ Green to get, get a lot of points to help my team, even though I'm a Steelers fan. And I find myself picking people on teams that I, I dislike because I know they can get me more points and I know they can help me get to my goal, which is to win the league. When I started, I feel like you just played for the heck of it. And if you won, you won. If you lost, you lost. But now, like, there's money involved, so that kind of raises the stakes. And I think now it's a little bit more competitive than it used to be. A um, lot, lot more attention uh, focused on every play. Even if a team is getting blown out, um, you, still, you still pay attention. If, if you're down, if, like, like on Monday Night Football this year, a prime example is the Steelers were playing the Chargers and <laughs> my matchup came down to point, I won by point .9 points. And it was because Heath Miller did not get in the end zone at the one yard line. And I was watching intensely on that game and I probably am not watching that intensely or focusing on each individual player and how they perform if the, ma if the matchup on fantasy that weekend wasn't there. While the future of fantasy football remains unclear, one thing is certain, a game that used to be played between the hash marks by 22 men 
once a week is now played by millions of people every week from the comfort of their couch.